Hey, Jared here from soundguitarlessons.com. This is my 200th video in a row of putting out a lesson video on this channel every single Tuesday for 200 weeks. Uh, usually I would talk about something like consistency and playing and not never stopping and you know keeping going with your goals and stuff like that, but I have talked a lot about that on my channel. I'll link to one of my favorite uh, videos that I talked about consistency um, recently. I think it was for my three year anniversary on the channel. Instead, today I'm gonna talk about improvising over simple triads. We're gonna do a one, six, four, five progression in the key of E. And the reason I'm doing this instead is because I just got an email from someone. Uh, this is from Eric. And Eric says, recently I'm practicing chord tones and I'm using a simple chord progression like one, six, four, five to master basic major and minor triads. Uh, the simple chord progression with no extensions makes me curious about how to make a beautiful solo over it since it's very basic with limited options. Uh, if possible, can you please make a video about it? So here's my video about it and i had you know a episode queued up about talking about consistency and all that but i'd rather talk about this because eric reached out and the main thing that jumps out at me from this question is saying it makes me curious about it because uh how do you make a beautiful solo over it because it's very basic with limited options so that's the main thing that made me want to like oh i definitely got to do a video about this because the harmony can be simple but our options are never limited. You can always play anything you want. And this is one of the coolest things about improvising over harmony is that you can add to the harmony or you can make the harmony more dense or you, know, you can play more simple over thick harmony or you can play really rich concepts over simple harmony. You can do anything you want. So in this video, in my kind of typical fashion, I'm gonna break down several steps that if you're working on really any chord progression, but this is especially good if you're working on triads, uh, you know, something that's in a key, just not seventh chords, just all in a key. I'm gonna give you several steps for practice this, practice this, practice this, um, in this order to get, uh, to master the sense of harmony and chords and then just let go and just play and create and express yourself. And uh, let's go through those steps. I think you're gonna like them. Um, some very important points here about how to set yourself free over chord progressions uh, while at the same time learning how to identify stuff I talk about all the time like chord tones and knowing exactly where you are on the chords. There's two worlds here we're trying to combine. One of them I think of as like being in the laboratory, doing everything precisely, and the other one is like, you just have to let go. You have to be on the playground and just, just be free. So let's dive into these steps. First, I'm going to set up a loop of just E, then C sharp minor, then A, then B, okay? That's gonna be one, six, four, five in the key of E, and we're gonna improvise over that. Let's go to the guitar view. Step one is going to be the most obvious one, and that's that, well, we really need to find something that works over it, and in a major key or minor key that's just within a key and triads, let's find the pentatonic scale. So here's the most typical spot that people would improvise over this. Now, I know that it's likely that if you've improvised at all, this is probably the what you're already doing, and maybe have been doing for like 20 years and not knowing how to get past that. But let's do it as step one. We need to have the pentatonic scale that just works over it. And I want us to make sure we outline it really clearly so we see it, and then I want us to also try to make real music with it and phrasing, okay? And as we go through these steps, we're gonna get more and more detailed to know where we are and to make better music with this, so. Just exploring around to make sure I got a good feel with it, right? And then do some phrasing with it. Check out my phrasing playlist if you need um, ideas around how to work on phrasing, where you're 
playing music with the space and actually saying something regardless of how simple a scale might be. Okay, so that's pentatonic. Now I talk about chord tones on my channel a lot, but let's talk about this for a second with the whole kind of, this, it's so simple and basic. Well, what's interesting with the pentatonic scale over this is that, well, this is E major pentatonic, then this is C sharp minor pentatonic, then over the A chord, like this note is the major seven of A. You don't need to know that right now, you can map that out later. But my point is when you play like this kind of overall scale that works, you're gonna be playing some extensions or sevens or you know different things that are colorful by accident. You're gonna follow your ear and just try to make music with it. It's often why it's so tasty. And that when you go to work on chord tones strictly, it sounds more limited. So there's a reason we work on chord tones. Okay, moving on to number two. Simple enough, let's make it the blues scale. added that one note that's the blue scale just noodling with it that's fine let's go to step two let's do the same thing just the parent major scale okay if you want diagrams of all these scales i have a pdf pack called the printable parent scales pdf pack has all of these really clearly written out for you there's a link in the description to get that so major scale e major that's the scale all these chords come from breaking it up a little bit and I'm not worried about I know I play fast sometimes I'm using slurs I'm using scale patterns stuff like that but you sound like you you don't even sound like me now that we did pentatonic scale blues scale major scale now let's master chord tones Okay, so I have a lot on this. I'll put a link in the description to my like chord tone improvisation playlist. Um, but we just wanna map out like E major triads only. And I'm staying in one position just cause that's a great way to work on this. So you're not ship jumping around. And then just your triad chord tones. This is harder than seventh chords in my opinion cause there's less uh, connections. But let's try to do it super, super slow but I'm gonna stay with the progression going cause the progression is going right now. E major. There's that six chord, four chord, five. So the melodies kind of write themselves when you're doing chord tones, and I was just using some phrasing with that, um, but you can hear, oh wow, there's something special happening there that's very different than how, I'd say the pentatonic scale on its own is also very special. It just happens to be the easier thing to do. If chord tones were easier, th that's a really wonderful sound. It's just kind of more targeting, it's a little more classical sounding almost. If for some reason just playing the same scale over it was harder, like the pentatonic scale the whole time, well, that would seem very refreshing, you know, in contrast. So neither one is better or worse. One is just a little easier. The best thing about working on chord tones is not that we want that sound. It's that we know where we are. So. Six chord. Four chord. and we get the sense of four, five. Okay, I have a chord tone pack also that has chord tones mapped out for all this. So I'll put that in the description as well. I usually only link to one thing, but I'll give you both of those. There's a link in the description to all the chord tones of chord types you'd need for really anything, but you can just work on the triads if you want. Um, so the best part about that is not that we want to sound that way, though I think it's an extremely fun challenge to 
try to make sure we play something tasteful. Like that sounded kind of like a, you know, 50s pop melody, right? Just something really simple that actually sounds good to us. But the best part is now that we have our ears in tune with and our hands and our fingers in the fretboard aligned with the actual chord progression. Now, if we go back to playing whatever we want, this is step five, I would just focus on knowing where you are. So, this is an internal thing in your mind. You can play pentatonic if you want. I know I'm on the one chord, and I know I'm on six now. I know I'm on four now, and I know I'm on five now. Or I play major scale. I know I'm on four, right? So this is a step where like knowing where you are is arguably the most valuable skill out of anything when it comes to improvisation because you can play whatever and if you land back into a spot that works with the beginning of maybe the form of the song or the beginning of a, a four bar phrase or a certain chord you can play crazy stuff and land in a place where you know where you are and it sounds like this master plan you had the whole time so knowing where you are the worst part about just noodling forever on one skill is that we're actually not thinking of where we are in the structure okay so that's to practice knowing where we are. Now number six is to really get it sounding like we know where we are. Oh, sorry, number six is um, that I want you to try to add extra notes. Try to add sevens. And add chromatic notes. The way I do this is you go in and out of trying something and say, ooh, I didn't like that. And try it somewhere else. And if you want to map out all the seventh chord versions, that's something you can do here. Like that's E major seven, here's C sharp dot, uh, <laughs> I'll, say, I'll say the numbers instead. The one major seven. Six minor seven, four major seven, and five dominant seven. So, or chromatic notes. So, now what I did right there is the final step, seven, which is you do anything you want and you try to zoom out and play with whatever scale, pentatonic, blues, major, anything you want. You're zooming out, but then you're occasionally targeting a certain chord, right? And I landed, I played whatever. I could do... And I landed on the third of E. So that's the benefit of outlining the chord tones that it didn't sound like I was playing triad chord tones I was playing some whatever weird out stuff and then I knew how to land at the beginning of the phrase on the third that's that's what mapping out all the chord tones was valuable for so now let me suggest a way to do this that is like the most musical thing you could do tried and true we're gonna do a phrasing structure of a a b a where you're gonna play an idea and you're gonna play it three times in a row over the one chord over the six chord, over the four chord, and then over the five chord, you're going to just target a chord tone of the five chord. Here's how it's gonna sound. Here it comes, ready? So three things in a row could be anything. And then you target the five chord after that. This is really, really important because this E chord, E, and then C sharp minor, and then A, those can all kind of be the same harmonic function. And then five is the one that's actually different. So it's just down the scale. There's the chord tone of five, the third of five. New scale. 
right now I'm going away from it and playing whatever, but that's something I want you to do. So that targeting, understanding the harmony, that's helping me come back to the root a lot too when the E chord comes back around, landing back on that root, just because I want to hear that. And again, you don't have to sound like me. You don't have to like how I sound even, obviously. You, you sound like you, but the principles are all the same, okay? So those are seven steps that you can use to, to very slowly uh, master this, both in a zoomed in kind of micro detailed way and then a macro, macro phrasing, play anything you want way. And the combo of those two worlds is where the best music happens. So some general takeaways there are that we should work in the laboratory mode, as I call it, where we are being crazy detailed. That's how you map out the chord tones. That's how you work out a scale pattern. That's how you do this technical thing that is, is all about practicing. It's the fitness of it. And then we use that knowledge as our kind of intuitive map to occasionally, as often or as little as you want to, land in those quote unquote right spots. But one of the main takeaways here is there are no right notes. It's not simple chord progression needs to be simple music over the top of it or vice versa or whatever. There's nothing wrong that you can play at all. There's just potential tension and dissonance and resolution and consonance, right? So you can play very consonant the whole time, which is all chord tones, very classical all triad chord tones, whatever, you can add some sevens. That's very technical stuff. Or you can let loose and play pentatonic scale. But by only doing any one of these things, we are, that's when we're limiting ourselves, right? So in terms of feeling like we have limitations, blues scale sounds amazing, but how long can you play the blues scale without feeling like, where else can I go with this, right? What usually sounds amazing in music is change. That's why tension and then resolution is one of the main uh, kind of the main qualities that we are getting an emotional response from when we're listening to anything. So you can create tension by repeating an idea a bunch or playing dissonant notes and then resolving them or whatever. You can play create tension by playing the blues scale for way too long and then finally landing on something very simple or chord tones or more classical sounding. So so those are some of the main takeaways for that and and really you can do anything you want around that and uh, as I said already, we want to work on all those technical dry drilling skills and then really work on letting loose and letting some of that just come into our playing naturally. And if it's not coming in naturally, we go back and drill and then we try to just let loose and play again and try to find a sound that we want. And it's all worth it. Mapping out the chord tones, for example, all worth it when you play a bunch of stuff, even just with only the blues scale, and then you land on that chord tone on the five chord that's outside of the pentatonic scale. And you're like, oh, that's why I did all that. Because I know where that is now. I know I'm on that chord and I know I'm on that chord tone. So I hope that was helpful for you. The main thing I want you to get for yourself, if you don't have it already, is my printable parent scales PDF pack. It's all the parent scales, which means all the modes come from those scales that you'll need to know to improvise over anything, including major pentatonic, which is also minor pentatonic, including the blues, which is major and minor blues, including the major scale, which is also all the modes. All of those are in my pack, so get that if you don't have it. Super easy to read diagrams, great to practice with. And as an extra thing, since I mentioned it in this video, you can get my chord tone vocabulary pack, which is same type of thing, but just all the actual chord tones written out for 12 different chord types, really every chord type you need to be able to improvise over jazz changes if that's a direction that you want to go. So you can get that as well. That will also be in the description. Just click those links down there and you can download them. Since this is my 200th video in a row, 200 weeks in a row of putting up a video, not missing one every Tuesday, I would love for you to watch my consistency video that I did when I hit three years, uh, three year anniversary on this channel because I expressed all of my um, ideas about how important consistency is, which obviously applies to our practice and definitely applies to any sort of outlet that you have, whether it's songwriting, improvising, playing gigs. I talked about gigs last week on the channel. I talked about having an outlet a few weeks ago on the channel. I'll put links to those things in the description as well. But 
Uh, make sure you watch my consistency video because it's designed to give you a boost of inspiration and motivation for just playing the long game, showing up little by little every day and getting to that place you want to be in music, which for the most part should be the journey, right? The fact that we get to show up every day is the best part, but we want to take advantage of that consistency and just let it add up. Just let it add up little by little by little and turn around one day and say, whoa, look at all the progress I made. So watch that video. I'll put a link to it on the screen right here if you're watching on YouTube or there's a link in the description uh, if you want to go there. As you know, I post a video every single week, every Tuesday, put up a video lesson. Next week's lesson is going to be how to rickroll someone on the guitar. It's really just a tutorial on how to play a solo guitar arrangement of Never Gonna Give You Up, but it's a perfect excuse to rickroll someone so or rather rickrolling someone is a perfect excuse to learn it so i hope to see you in that video next week take care thanks a lot for watching and happy practicing